Welcome to Gridbusters. So today what I want to do is give you a really quick tour of the AC side of things, how we've got things hooked up and how we're going to hook it up to the Victron equipment. Now, recently just installed this um, breaker panel, this fuse box, really annoying. I had filmed it, uh, however, the SD card got corrupted. So I lost all the footage, which is so annoying. So what I want to do today is kind of like, just take the cover off, show you what, what's been done, why we've I've done it that way. Um, and then uh, show you how we're going to hook it up to the Victron inverter and then how this is going to be hooked up to the electricity meter, which is going to be installed in a couple of weeks time. Now, I do have a uh, fully qualified French electrician who's been working with me. So he um, uh, so his name is Rod. He came in and just checked over everything, helped me out with specifying a few things as well. Uh, Rod, the French electrician, he's going to be here when the electricity board uh, uh, install the meter so we make sure everything is up to regulations and spec and everything but today what I want to do like I said is just give you a quick tour of how we're going to hook everything up to the Victron equipment and also how I've got everything here hooked up to the barn uh, which is uh, where the garage is and where the tractor shed will be so here is the uh, breaker panel now it's a rather large breaker panel um, I've gone with four separate rows and this is actually hooked, so a lot of these circuits come directly from the house, they've been extended from the house, they're not live yet, uh, we're still running off the old breaker panel which is in the living room in the main house, but we have put the uh, cables through the attic and down, you saw me, me doing that in a previous video, um, and all of these breakers have actually been numbered, they've all got numbers on, and those numbers correspond with the cable numbers which go through into the main house. I'll include a cutaway of that. Um, and you can see on those cables on this junction box, which is in my hallway, all those cables are actually numbered and they correspond with the numbers here on the breaker panel itself. Now, obviously some of these circuits are turned on. The circuits which are turned on are the circuits which are for the plant room here and the, uh, the room next door where the stair stairwell is and the attic in this house. Now we also have in this breaker panel uh, lightning protection. Uh, now we don't actually need to put lightning protection in um, this far north in France, but you know, for the sake of 50 euros, 50 or 60 euros or whatever it cost, <laughs> I thought I might as well put it in. Um, my auntie, she has a house in Ireland and their house was struck by lightning, it's right on the coast, and every single appliance in the house was fried, everything, even the kettle, uh, the cooker, the, the hob, everything was fried, um, and they had to start over because they didn't have lightning protection, so you never know, so I, I put it in the, in the breaker panel here, what's 50 euros, <laughs> I mean, imagine, I, yeah, imagine if all of my equipment was fried, it would uh, be devastating, so definitely worth putting that in, uh, if you live in a rural location and you're you know, having a new um, panel put in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just remove the cover. Okay, here we go. So let's push this down here. So we have the breaker panel here. We've got four different rows, as you can see. Here is the lightning protection. We've got the power coming in at the top, which is purely just a temporary power, which is why the cable's so thin. This is literally just you know, here until the electricity meter goes in. This is the existing cable that came into the plant room, which comes underground, which was here when we, when we moved in. So it's not, not thick enough at the moment. I know that that's not to code, but this is, like I said, is just temporary until we get the meter put in. And then on these French fuse boxes, we have a bus bar coming down, connecting all of the RCDs. And then obviously the bus bars along uh, the top here as well. So the Victron inverter has four AC lines. There are two AC inputs and two AC outputs, as well as obviously the, you know, the battery terminal. So on this side is where all of our batteries connect, the DC. Uh, then obviously we have uh, an AC input, which is from the mains. This is just for uh, backup. So if we don't have enough solar power, uh, if the batteries have run out, we then use the mains a bit like a backup generator. So we, we do have power if we need it, if we had like a whole week of no sun or two weeks of no sun or something, uh, we can still use the grid. Uh, we have a second AC input, 
which can be hooked up to a generator. Um, I might use that, who knows, you know, if we have another two week long power cut in the middle of the winter and there's no sun, we could hook a generator up to AC input too and then we'd still be online, which would be fantastic and we could still charge our batteries actually. And then we have two AC outputs. So the reason um, Victron has two AC outputs is fantastic. So um, what you don't want to happen in, a, in an off-grid situation, so let's say the, there was a two week long power cut. What we don't want to happen is if we, in, because we have electric heat, underfloor heating in our house, you know, which uses a huge amount of power and we have like a tumble dryer and we have the hot water heater and the dishwasher and the washing machine, all these things use vast amounts of electricity. Now, in the event of a two week long power cut, you know, or a week long power cut, which we recently had, we don't have to run the underfloor heating. We can use the log burner. We don't have to use the tumble dryer, etc. Um, so it wouldn't matter if we didn't use those things. So what we don't want to happen is if there's a power cut during the night or if we're running on batteries only, we don't want to be draining all of our batteries if there's a power cut during the night running the underfloor heating or heating the uh, hot water or charging the, the car. I don't want to be wasting my, you know, the household batteries powering that equipment if there is a power cut. So what we can actually do with the two different AC outputs, you can program those outputs to do different things. So you can have what's called a protected circuit and a normal circuit in the system. So this is kind of like one of the reasons why I've wired up the breaker panel the way that I have uh, wired it up. So you have your protected circuits, which are all the circuits in the house which you want to protect. So in other words, all my computer equipment, all the lights in the house, all the normal things, all the things which don't draw a huge current. And then I have the regular inputs, which are the high draw, um, uh, you know, the high current draw pieces of equipment, like the heating, the hot water, the car charger, things like that. Now, in the event of a power cut, um, the Victron will stop um, delivering load to things like the heating, the hot water, the car charger, and keep the lights on in the house, basically. Now, obviously, if we wanted to, we could override that on the touch screen, um, but that's how the system works. Let me show you. So we're gonna have two AC outputs. And the way that I've got this board hooked up is we've got a bus bar between uh, row one, row two, and row three. So those are the protected circuits. So those are all the circuits in the house, like basically the basic plug sockets in the house, the lighting, the lighting in here, the computer rack, the internet Starlink, uh, the smoke alarms, all of that equipment is on row one, two, and three. And then the bottom row here, which isn't hooked up to um, the bus bar, which is kind of like separate, if you like, uh, this is all the high draw stuff. So things like um, the underfloor heating circuits, and uh, the hot water feed uh, are, are here. So that's, this will come out of AC output number two from the Victron inverter. So we're gonna have two AC outputs. One will hook up to this input here, and the second output from the Victron inverter will hook up to AC uh, input number two on the fuse box. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the tails from the electricity meter will come out along here and then come into the Victron inverter. Hope that kind of makes sense. What I want to show you now is how we've got this breaker panel hooked up to the barn. So on this bus bar there is an output here and we've got two, uh, we've got 15 millimeter square cables, um, positive and negative here, and they come down, uh, you can probably just about see it here, it's a, bit, a little bit dark, there's a thick cable here and that goes to the barn. So we've drilled a hole through the wall, which is um, over a meter thick. So it's very, very thick walls. And we've got some trunking there in the wall as well. And this cable um, goes th uh, directly through the wall and to the barn. Let me show you the route. So this cable here comes out of the wall. Uh, we have yet to put some trunking in here. So that's still to be done. That hasn't been done yet. So that will be in conduit. It then comes underground here and then that, that is in um, reinforced conduit under the ground. It comes under the patio here, um, down, 
and then there's a you know thick conduit and the pipe is in, inside the uh, conduit and then we dug a trench all the way along and I didn't film it because that day it was absolutely tipping it down with rain when we had the digger here which was unfortunate so I didn't um, didn't film it um, but yeah the trench comes along here and then you can see the conduit which ends there this is just a, a log store or an old log store which isn't used anymore in the barn um, and then it comes up and it's clipped to the wall here and goes up and I think what I'm going to do is I am going to box that in because I don't like the way that cable is just sort of flapping around there a little bit I mean it is you know securely securely in um, it's not going anywhere but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to box that in because I'm not happy with it like that the cable then comes along here down along the wall there and then through into the breaker panel. So the cable comes uh, through the wall and then comes into the breaker panel here and goes directly into this main uh, cutoff switch for the power. So this is the cutoff switch for the power into this breaker panel. And then from this cutoff switch, it then goes into the RCD uh, for this room. So that's how we've got everything set up. And then obviously we've got the, uh, the car charger there, which we installed in the previous video. Somebody was asking what car I use with the car charger. I have a Tesla Model S. Uh, had one for almost uh, 10 years now, um, about nine and a half years, I think it is. Um, very happy with it. <laughs> that's great. Um, might have to sell it because uh, it's an English car in France. So uh, might be getting rid of that at some point and getting a new Tesla Model S for France. Don't know. Um, still haggling with Tesla whether I can move my free supercharging over to a new model over here. Um, because my car has free charging when I'm on the road at the Tesla chargers because I was a very early adopter. Um, and they do have a program where you can transfer your free charging to a new car, but because I'm in a different country, it's like really complicated and we're trying to get around that. So um, if I can't move it, I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of my car, to be honest, I might just keep, keep my car, because it's, uh, I've worked out, I save about 1,500 pounds uh, per year in charging costs alone, because I do a, quite a lot of long distance uh, travel when I'm on the road. So, you know, it's a good saving um, to have um, in a car. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the AC side of things. In the next video, we're gonna start wiring up some DC. So in the next video, what I wanna do is start pulling the DC cables through. I have some trunking which goes underground all the way through to the plant room. We're gonna be pulling through the first solar cables and hooking up the, here, the PV combiner boxes, the solar combiner boxes. We're gonna be hooking these up um, the cables all the way through into the plant room into the Victron charge controllers. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. Um, hope you found that useful. I just wanted to show you the AC side of things. Sorry that I lost all that footage from um, which I had filmed of installing the box. And if there's anything you, you guys would like to see me cover in these videos, please do let me know. And please do comment. Let me know what you think of the videos. Uh, you know, YouTube loves the comments for some reason. They seem to really uh, like that. And uh, do like the video if you like the video. And uh, I'll catch you next time.